Well, tomorrow on Scottish, don't miss all the latest home improvement and design news in the Home Show at the earlier than usual time of ten past five. <laughs> But now in Scottish, a special hour-long episode of High Road. Eleven. It's open. Twelve. Thirteen. <clears throat> Just put it on the table. Fourteen. Fifteen. Oh. Oh. Morning, Eric. Yeah. Scrambled eggs, just like you ordered. Oh. Mmm. Smells mm. delicious. You know, I should have done this years ago. It's wonderful been looked after all day long. Oh, get that for me, will you, Eric? <clears throat> Mrs. Craig wants to see me. Oh, come on in, Cheryl. Uh, actually, you'll need it downstairs. I won't keep her, I promise. Would you like some tea? Off you go, Eric. This is girls' talk. About tomorrow night. I'm all set. I've got a full range of Lady Lucy products to display and... Here are some cards. All you have to do is invite some friends. Would be a problem. <laughs> Afternoon, David. I'm impressed, then. Working on a Saturday. You are working, I take it. Not poaching. I don't poach. I earn my crust. How about you? Now, if you'll excuse me. Don't go yet. We've got some news for you. Do you want to tell him or shall I? Or perhaps you've already heard. Everyone else seems to know. Know what? Peter and I are getting married. Aren't you going to offer us your congratulations? And what does she do with herself all day? That's what I'd like to know. I wish you'd drop it, Mary. And you'd better watch it. Me? Stella Gregg is rich. And she's idle. And you're neither. You'd better remember that. She'll have you in the poorhouse if you try to keep up with her. I'm going to go and clear a space in the fridge for Morag's cheeses. Oh, Stella. Lovely to see you. Would you like to come through for a coffee? Oh, I'd love to, Isabel, but I've no time. Oh, oh, you must be rushed off your feet. I'm just in to check we're still on for tomorrow night. Oh, I'll be there, don't worry. And you, Mary, are you coming? The lingerie party, I did tell you. Oh, that? No, I don't really think so. Oh, come on, you'll have to look. You don't have to strip off in front of anyone. But it's a con. Just trying to force you into buying things you don't really need. Oh, suit yourself, Mary. Excuse me, I want a word with Sheila. You are going to be missing out on a good night, you know. All the women are coming. It'll be fun. However did we amuse ourselves before Stella Gregg came on the scene? <laughs> Oh, I'd love to come, Stella. Thank you. Sure. Can I have a word? Oh, I'll see you tomorrow night, okay. then. Bye. Bye. What is it, Gary? It's Sarah. Did you notice anything funny about her last night? Not particularly. You went to the pictures, didn't you? Did the film upset her? Did she say anything? No. Oh, it's just... She came home in such a state. She's been crying all night. She won't tell me what's wrong. Listen, Gary, she's pregnant, easily upset. Probably over something silly. Best just leave her, eh? Well, this'll be the test, eh? I just hope it goes all right. Oh, I don't know well. Stop worrying. All the work that went into making it. I mean, if people don't buy the Luke, cheese, then... I'm more interested in building up our name than I am in selling. We're just starting out, remember? Well, I'll pop in later and see how you're getting on. No, look, I'll be fine. I'm so excited, I can hardly wait. Good luck. <sighs> oh, 
So, excuse me. Oh, just slept so badly last night. Tossed and turned all night. I know. Oh, still, it's just a change. We'll get used to it, I suppose. Oh, we might. Don't know if Lucy will. Of course she will. In time. Well, she told me she hates her new room. She asked me why we took the old one off her. Was it because we were angry with her? Oh, thanks, Eric. I really needed to hear that. You know, and the room service, Joe. it's every hour God sends. I mean, she thinks we've got nothing better to do with our time than wait on her hand and foot. Eric. She acts like royalty and I, and I feel like a blasted servant. Yes, ma'am. Anything you say, ma'am. Hello, Stella. Stella! Hello. Hi there. I'm just going upstairs. I think I'll have an early lunch today. Mm. In your room? Mm, and miss the chance to mingle in the bar. <laughs> But a wee drink before lunch would be lovely. Could you send one up with a lunch menu? Oh, hi, Lena. Hi. You two look so for some fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Not here for long, so we're packing in as much as we can. <laughs> Here's Gary. We've got our own chauffeur for the day. Oh, come yes. let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Oh, it's all right for some. They're not very prominent, are they? I want them to be seen. Ah, but they'll have to be in the fridge, surely. Well, I'll tell you what, then. I'll put the samples on the counter. Sixty pound and two five. Bye now, Mr. Doherty. Uh, is it all right if I just clear a wee bit of space here, ma'am? Thank you. Right. Now I can give folk a sample as they come in the door. Oh, you're going to stay? It's not a problem, is it? No, no, not at all. Oh, good. How does that look? Very nice. You've come well prepared, I'll say that for you. Just as please. What's that horrible smell? Um, would you like to try some cheese from Kerr's Creamery? Oh, no, thanks. The smell's going for me. It's goat's cheese. Well, that explains it then. Come on, just try a bit. Oh. Morik, how about if you spread the cheese on some crackers or, or oat cakes? No, that's a good idea. Could you get me a couple of packets, please? Uh, just hold on a wee minute, Cheryl. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't. I've got to get back for Liam's lunch. Sorry. Oh, oh excuse me. When you're finished your shopping, maybe you'd like to try some delicious local cheese mm. from Kerr's Creamery. Yes, I will. Thank you. It's great fun, isn't it, the three of us working together? <laughs> Are you going to be staying all day? Well, to get the ball rolling, but unfortunately, I won't be able to do this every day. Sarah! Sarah! I know you're in there! Come on now, I'm not going away till I've seen you. Right, you've seen me. You look dreadful. What's happened? Will you just go, please? No, I can't leave you like this. I saw Gary this morning. Oh. Don't worry, I covered for you. I hated having to do it. He doesn't deserve this. He's worried sick about you. So what happened last night? I take it you saw Adele. What did he say? I'd really rather not talk about it. Well, I'm afraid you're going to have to because I'm not leaving until I know exactly what's going on. Sarah, you have to sort this out. If not for yourself, then for the baby. Sheila, I can't bear it. I just can't bear it. It's all over between Peter and me. He doesn't love me. He says he never did. Not worth it. Not worth any of it. He's he's loathsome. He's a nothing. I know. I know that now. Oh, Sheila, what have I done? What have I done? <laughs> Give me. <laughs> oh, it's perfectly beastly having to pour one's own plunk. Oh, I know, but I had to give the butler the afternoon off. It's been run over by a bus. Oh, you sentimental old thing. I'd have given him the sack for being so careless. What about the driver? Oh, poor chap. Probably got the fright of his life. No, sweetie. I mean our driver. Oh. What's his name? 
Shouldn't we offer him a little something? Well, you can try, darling, but I think he's already married. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I thought you might like some nibbles. Thanks. You sure you can spare it? <laughs> God, he's is. miserable today. <laughs> what a bright sight. That this thing with Peter Adele is well and truly finished. I know you've been hurt and humiliated, but thank God you're finally over him. You don't understand. Oh, I do, believe me. He's a very attractive man. Charming. Smooth talking. But he's also a lot older than you, and he's your boss. Oh, I've no doubt he flattered you, showered you with attention. But he cast a spell on you, Sarah, but now you're free of him. Oh, stop it! Just stop it, will you? I'll never be free of him, never! This baby is a part of him. Have you any idea what that feels like? Sarah! I feel dirty, like I've been invaded, violated. I've got this thing growing inside of me and it's like he's eating me up, controlling we me. Will stop it? Now, just stop it now. The baby is Gary's. I can't know that. You've got to accept it. Make yourself believe it. What? Lie to myself? Every single day for the rest of my life. Even if I could do it to myself, I can't do it to Gary. Oh, Sarah. I've got to get out of here. Well, I'll come with you then. No, just leave me. I don't think you should be in your I room. I said leave me alone. chatted those guys up and they're taking you for a ride in their boat. Yeah, well, more or less. Great. You'll not be needing me anymore then. Yes, we will. Will you wait for us? Oh, come on. The way you were flirting with those guys. They're not taking you sailing for nothing, you know. You've obviously got other ideas. Yeah, well, so have we. Look, we're big girls. We can handle them. <laughs> Are they about your age? The situation wasn't the same, but my baby was conceived in circumstances I didn't want reminded of. Just like you. I carried the child. I gave birth. It was a wee girl. Though I, I didn't know that at the time. I never... I never held her in my arms. I never even saw her face. It was hard, but I was strong. I'd made my decision, carried it through. But it was the wrong decision, Sarah. It's not a day goes by when I don't regret it. I don't think how different my life would be if I'd kept her. Kept my daughter. Whatever you decide now, you've got to live with for the rest of your life. I would give my life for it to be Gary's baby. Well, there's a good chance that it is. Hang on to that chance. I can't. Have you thought what you'll tell him? Yeah. I'll say I'm going down to England to see my mum. And I'll go in and have an abortion. I'll tell him that it was a false alarm or that I had an early miscarriage. You've certainly given it a lot to thought. I have. So there's no point in trying to talk you out of it. Right. Well, you better act now. The earlier, the better. I'm sorry, Sheila. 
There's no need to apologize to me. It's your decision. I'm sorry about your wee girl. You'd have made a wonderful mother. Kirst Creamery. Hmm. Have a card. See, there's a wee map on the back. Sure. Me and my husband run the business between us. By the way, we love having visitors, so if you're passing, just look in. So what's going on today, then? Oh, it's Morag. She's promoting her cheeses. She's real good at it, you know. She's got her way with people. Aye, <laughs> she monopolises them. Well, I'll be looking out for you, then. Bye. Bye. Am I right? Right now, Davy. I think you're going to like this. Try one. Uh, I don't think so, Morag. Uh, it's a bit dry. No, I've had a nice glass of red wine to wash it down. That's a great idea. Wish I'd thought of it sooner. Isabel, mm -hmm. would you open a couple of bottles of red wine, please? Oh, and bring us some glasses. On me, of course. Of course. You know, I think I could get to like this cheese tism thing. Thank you very much for your help. Bye-bye. Right, I think we're getting somewhere. To get an abortion, you need two doctors. Your own GP and a hospital gynaecologist. Your own GP? And there you have to agree that continuing the pregnancy would be a greater risk to your mental and physical health than an abortion. What am I going to tell them? Tell them the truth. You're joking. No, I'm not. Tell them that you don't think your husband's the father and that the stress it's putting on your marriage is terrible. So you want an abortion. I can't. It'll be totally confidential. I can't. I can't go through with it. It's Peter's baby I don't want, not Gary's. What if it is Gary's baby and I kill it? Enjoy yourselves, did you? Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> We're such a laugh. Bye! <laughs> what a couple of dipsticks. Bye bye, bye! <laughs> Plonkers. That Craig, he's definitely married. Oh, they both were. Had it written all over them. <laughs> Just out for a bit on the side. They wanted to make a night of it, you know, take us out for dinner, dancing, then back to their place for a private party. Mm, they were quite insistent. Mm. How did you get out of it? Oh, easy. Said we were gay. <laughs> Look, you too. I know we've kept you waiting, and we're sorry. Can we go now, please? Gary? What? You don't mind if we snog in the back seat, do you? What the... <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> Eric said you wanted to see me. Yes, would you like a drink? No, I'm working. Oh, sorry, I wouldn't keep you. But since I'm here, perhaps we could have a wee chat about the room service? Oh, that's all right. I've no complaints whatsoever. As I said to Eric this morning, I just love staying here getting pampered. No, the reason I asked to see it is about tomorrow night. I'm having a few friends round. I want to order a cold buffet. Oh, um, for how many? About ten. Is that a problem? No, it shouldn't be. As long as it doesn't go on too long, we do have other guests to consider. Well, actually, I was hoping you would come along too. You can keep an eye on us. You know what a bunch of women can be like in their own. Oh. It's a girls' night, is it? Yes, Cheryl's organising it. Cheryl? She's an agent for Lady Lucy Longshire. Didn't you know? No, I didn't, actually. I thought I'd give her a wee turn. Have you seen the stuff that she's selling? Oh, she assures me it's all in the best possible taste. No crotchless knickers or sex toys or any of that stuff. Go on, say you'll come. It'll be fun. I'll think about it. Well, remember, no men allowed. In that case, I've thought about it. And I'll see you then. To Kerr's Creamery. At least somebody's happy. Mm, not like the poor guy over there. Come on, Gary, don't be a spoils fault. <sighs> Look, I need to get the cab back to check tonight before I go home. Just pay me what you owe me and I'll be off. Not to be by the drink. I don't want a drink. Look, I tell you what, why don't you leave your meter running, eh? Now, go and sit down over there. Come on. 
Right, Eric, I'll have two white wines mm -hmm. and a pint of lager for a chauffeur over there. You had a good time, I take it. Oh, I can't remember the last time I had such fun. We met these two hunks and they took us out on their boat. And it's not over yet. The night is still young. <laughs> good. Thank you. Ah, no, did you tell her? Uh, not exactly, no. Oh, I get it. You want Muggins here to do the dirty work, do you? Right, better get this over and done with. You can take over here. Uh, no, hold on, Eric. Where is the harmony? I mean, Stella is paying for the room service after all. Well, you've changed your tune, haven't you? No, no, I've just thought about it. And you see, I do think she's going to be good for business. For example, she's having a little soiree tomorrow evening and she would like us to do the catering. Really? What kind of a soiree? Oh, just a few girlfriends. It sounds terribly twee, actually. But don't you worry, because I'm going to pop in and just see how everything's going at some point. You got everything, Tiffany? Uh, yeah, thanks. I'll uh, settle up with you later. Yeah, you got a minute? <laughs> Not now, Davy. I was just wondering if you had any plans for tonight. You bet I have. What? With those two hunks from the yacht? <sighs> you are so sad sometimes, David. Do you know that? Come on, just give me more money. Oh, will you lighten that? All right, I'll call by for it tomorrow. Well, Tiffany's just got you a drink in. I said I didn't want a drink. Does it not strike you I don't want to sit here drinking my two daft wee girls when I could be at home with my wife? Oh, Gary, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting about Sarah. I don't. Oops. Obviously not ready to play with the big girls, eh? <laughs> Look, I tell you what, let's take these up to my room, eh? Yeah, okay. Oh, what about his pint? Oh, why not? <laughs> Davy? Yeah? Here, have this. It'll go to waste otherwise. <laughs> Oh, who on earth can that be? It's only me. We got back early, so I wondered if you wanted me to fix you some supper. Oh, don't worry, Effie. We're going out for dinner. Oh, very nice. I think it'll be a TV dinner for Jockey and me. And then I'll get the knitting out. I know it's early days, but I've started a wee jacket for Gary's baby. Look, Effie, I'm sorry, but we've got a table booked. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll leave you in peace. I'm just that excited I can hardly wait. Heaven help us when this baby arrives. I uh, don't suppose you see us having a baby. Just checking. Nice, you've started it. I'm not doing too well. Let me help. I imagine just doing this together. I get them well. Hey, do you want anything to eat? You're not making me anything. I'll cook something for us when we finish this. From now on, that is the way it's going to be. You are going to be the best looked after pregnant woman there's ever been. Gary, I do love you. I wish I didn't ever have to let you go. Sounds all right to me. I'm sorry. Hey, come on. You don't need to apologise. You're supposed to be a weepy and emotional. It's all part of it. It's not that. Something wrong? Is it the baby? Is something wrong with the baby? What is it, Sarah? Gary, I know how much you want this baby. Look, whatever it is, we'll face it together, OK? Just tell me, for God's sake. I've made a terrible mistake. You don't mean... You're not saying you're not pregnant? No, I am pregnant, definitely. I'm just not sure that you're the father. to the point. Auto windscreens. Get straight to the point. Auto windscreens. Auto windscreens. You get straight to the point, we'll get straight to the problem.
you'll receive a survey from the Consumer Research Bureau. Fill it in and you could win £100 of premium bonds in our free prize draw. Giving you the chance every month to win £1 million. Worth waiting for, wouldn't you say? Loudon Castle Theme Park has seven wicked new attractions, including the Thunderloop Express, Scotland's biggest, wildest roller coaster. It's bigger, better, more thrilling than ever. It's loud and screaming! Loudon Castle Theme Park near Gulston and Ayrshire. You've never felt your heartbeat quite like this before. Last night, Direct Line threw down their mortgage challenge to banks and building societies. Now they'd like to open up their challenge to include savings accounts as well. Independent research shows that consumers most want to know, do you automatically put the money into the best interest rate available? Can the account be closed at any time without any penalty? Is your top rate account instant access with no loss of interest? And if you launched a similar account that paid a better rate, would you offer to transfer existing accounts into it? If any bank or building society would like the viewers to see their answers here tomorrow, just ring this number. Until around these times tomorrow, this is the Direct Line Challenge. If you're looking for a company you can really trust for windows, doors, or a conservatory, remember, with Pennycook, you won't have to fork out a bean until you're completely happy. Call now on 0345 51 5000. Had any sleep? I couldn't sleep. Well, at least lie down. You look exhausted. What do you care? Gary, I am so sorry. That makes it all right, does it? At least let me explain. What more is there to say? You had an affair with Peter Adele. You're expecting his baby. End of story. I don't know that it is his. It might be yours. I want it to be yours, Gary. I really do. Oh, thanks. I suppose I should be grateful. Why don't you shout at me or hit me or something? Well, like Adele would. I'm sorry, but that's not my style. You married the wrong man. I haven't. I've just been too stupid to realise what I had. I love you, Gary. Don't touch me. Love. You don't know what that means. Morning, Isabel. Oh, oh I nearly <laughs> jumped out my skin there. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Just you just getting back from the disco? No, I wasn't at a disco last night. Oh. Just thought I'd get up early. What are you looking for? A blue moon. <laughs> this has to be some kind of a record. Well, I woke up early and thought I'd invite myself to breakfast. Oh, you know, I'm always delighted to see you. Oh, wait till you hear about the carry-on we had yesterday. Just you and Tiffany? Yeah. Oh, we had a brilliant day out. Met these two blokes yeah. and my... Hold on. Wait till I put the kettle on. <laughs> and then I want to hear every juicy detail. <laughs> There you are. I was worried about you. Where have you been? <clears throat> My mind's been working overtime. What do you think mine's been doing? Gary. I kept asking myself, why? Peter Odell. It's unbelievable. Him of all people. How could she? No, I must have been mad. How did it start? 
Did they come on to you? What? I need to know. It's all mixed up in my mind. You must know how it started. I really don't want to talk about it. Oh, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to. The least I deserve is an explanation. I want in. I need to know why. It's thrown away everything. Daddy. Why? Just tell me why. I don't know. I suppose it started the day we went to Glasgow to see the designer. He made me feel so great about myself that day. He gave me so much responsibility. He just seemed so sophisticated and funny. I suppose he flattered my ego. I just sounds so pathetic now. Go on. Well, he started flirting with me. And it just seemed like a harmless bit of fun at first. I mean, he loved Sam and I loved you. Past tense, I notice. Don't say that. <laughs> You're the one that said it. You're the one that slept with Adele. I know. How could you do this to me? I thought you loved me. I do. I really do, Gary. I was so happy when I found out about the baby. I love you so much. The baby just made everything seem so perfect. Now you tell me it's probably not even mine. Oh, Gary, don't cry. Please don't cry. I'm so sorry. Are you sure that's all you want? Mr. Odell usually likes his bacon and egg on a Sunday. Well, he's still asleep. And the roast beef and Yorkshire pudding we've got for lunch will more than compensate. You know how he likes his Sunday roast. <laughs> yes, Miss Egan. Oh, the papers are late this morning. I'll bring them up when they arrive. Thanks, Effie. I thought I smelled coffee. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to wake you. I crept out. You were sleeping like a baby. Was I? Must be nice to have a clear conscience. So they say. Coffee? Yes, please. Where are you off to? Back to bed. You can come if you're good. Hmm. Don't know about that. Then you can definitely come. <laughs> Here. So want anything. I've got to eat something. That's what my mum used to say. No matter what disaster was happening, you need to eat something. As if that made it all right. Well, at least drink the tea. I don't want to sit here drinking tea. I want to be up at the big house telling Adele what I think of. You can't. Can't I? Should you watch me? Can I stop it? You're not thinking straight. Yes, I am. I'm going to tell Sam Hagen just what kind of creep she's got herself involved with. I'm blowing the gaff on Adele about your affair. The beating he gave me. The money he paid to shut me up the lot. She'll have him out in his ear before he knows what's happened. And where does that leave us? All bushed up, I'd say. And is that what you want? You know it's not. I want things to be the way they were. Well, they can't. I wish to God they could. You should have thought of that before you slept with Adele. I know. And I hate myself for what I've done to you. But I don't think going up there and confronting him is the answer. Why not? It'll give me a lot of satisfaction. I can't beat Adele in a fight, but I can still hit him with a heart. But don't you see? We'd be hurting ourselves more. The whole village would always point the finger at us and the baby, even if it is yours. Maybe that doesn't bother you if you're leaving me anyway. I don't know what I'm doing. It's in such a state trying to work out what's best. What a mess. What a bloody mess. 
Don't do anything just now. Come to bed. You look exhausted. I can't. I need to sort this out in my head. Go away, will you? You're just confusing me. I can't think straight. I don't blame you for hating me, Gary. But I want you to know that it is over between Adele and me. He means nothing to me. No, that's not true. I loathe him. I was stupid enough to let him come between me and the only man I've ever really loved. Right, that's you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Oh, morning, Mrs Gordon. Ah, oh, just in time. Do you like a cup of tea? Oh, no, thanks, love. I just popped in to make sure you two are still on for tonight. The lingerie party. <laughs> we wouldn't <laughs> miss it. Glendarek isn't going to know what hit it. Did you get any further with Mary? Oh, well, you know Mary. She's got reservations. Oh, I can imagine. I can just hear her. That woman's a hussy. <laughs> oh, she'll probably come just to prove she's not a prude. Oh, no, I wouldn't bank on it. I doubt if Mary's got much use for naughty underwear. Oh, you never know. Miracles can happen. Oh, stop it. What a bitch. <laughs> I'll do my best to persuade her. Please do, Isabel. I'd like to get as many as possible along, for Cheryl's sake. I feel sorry for that wee girl out cleaning all day to support her kid. It's no joke. Oh, well, with any luck, she'll get a fine big order for her, what's it called, Lady Lucy's lingerie. Mm, but not from Mary. No, I don't think they do long flannelette nighties with padlocks at the bottom. Oh, Stella! <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, ladies. Good oh, morning, Mrs Mack. Anyway, girls, it's 7.30 tonight. Tell Mary it's going to be a great night. It better be, because it's going to be a kind of housewarming for me, too. Ah, it's your first do since moving into the Arna Craig. Is that you having a party, Mrs Craig? Yes, Mrs. Mack. Hopefully the first of many. Didn't you get your invitation? No. No, I didn't. Oh, well, uh, let me rectify that right now. I hope you haven't been nibbling. Effie doesn't like it. <laughs> I wouldn't dream of nibbling, Effie. They have a wee taste of a roast beef, though. It's perfection. Done to a turn. You are incorrigible. <laughs> right, come on. Where? For a walk. Work up an appetite for lunch. Since when have you needed to work up an appetite? This is true. You're not coming? No. I'm enjoying reading the Sunday papers. You go. Right. I'm off to blow away the cobwebs. Fine. Bye. Bye. What do you want? I want you dead, Odell, that's what I want. What's your problem, MacDonald? Don't come the innocent. Sarah told me everything. Oh, is that so? You couldn't leave her alone, could you? She used your position here to take advantage of her. Now, hold on. Is that the version she gave you, is it? Well, she would, wouldn't she? <laughs> Let me tell you something, Gary. Your wife is a problem. Sam even noticed it. She warned me that Sarah had the hots for me. Put yourself in my position, eh? You want enough of a man for her. Well, what was I supposed to do, eh? She was begging for it. You lying bastard! Look, son! I don't want to get in a fight with you. You know you'll come off worse. I don't have to fight you. There's other ways. I'm sure Miss Hagen will be interested in hearing the whole story. Your affair. The hush money. All of it. You've ruined my marriage. Now I'm going to ruin yours before it even starts. Hold on. You're just 
being shown what the Alps have to offer. It's my turn. We all know how seriously the French take their food, but you can't go wrong with Uncle Ben's new gratin sauces. Just slice some potatoes, pour on the sauce and pop it in the oven. Voila, delicious potato gratin. Uncle Ben's gratin sauces, perfect every time. This will knock them out. Verrucas and warts are easily spread, but Bazooka Gel offers a clinically proven treatment with no need for plasters. So Bazooka that Verruca. Kashmir's very special. She mothers everything, including the cat. Meow. Meow. <laughs> We've always called her Super Mum. Super. <laughs> super food for super mum. And then there's Reggie, her son. He's very handsome. Pity he hasn't got his mother's brains. Pedigree chum, top breeder Eve Gardner and Kashmir and Reggie recommend it. How much is a five-minute call to France this weekend? Three pound fifty. Speaking of eight, four fifty. Three pounds. About six pounds. About four pounds. Oh, about a couple of quid. Save four pounds. The actual cost is just one pound seventeen or eighty-eight p with BT's friends and family and Premier Line packages. Is that all? Yeah. That's unbelievable. That is. It's really good value. Well impressed. Great. <laughs> good value for money. Very good. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. For more information on BT's discount packages, call free phone 0800 800 060. I hated this, but I thought if I left it any longer in the oven, it'd be brick hard. Well, he said he was just going for a quick walk on the estate. It's half past two. Oh, talk of the devil. Effie, I think there's something burning in the kitchen. Ah, there's a terrible the smell. I forgot all about it. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. I'd love a drink. Oh, sorry, I wasn't thinking. <laughs> Must have been some walk. You've been away ages. Sorry, I hope I haven't held you up. No, just enjoying it. Didn't notice the time. Oh, it didn't bother me, but Effie was getting a bit agitated. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope it's just the cabbage she's burnt, because I could eat a horse. What are you doing here? Oh, don't tell me they've got you working Sundays. No. Oh, just as well. I've got enough on my plate without cooking for somebody else. Do you look at that? A good pot. 
Just because Peter Adele's got no consideration. I'm looking for Gary. Did he call in? No, he didn't. Jockey's out. I've got to do everything on my own. Could he be upstairs with Miss Hagen? You might not have noticed him coming in. I just told you he's not with them. Peter Adele and her ladyship are sitting up there waiting on their lunch. Which I better get on the table right now or there'll be a riot. Now, what can I get you? Hey, I'll have a whiskey. What would you like, Morrig? Oh, I don't know. Something to put me in the party mood. Oh, well, Stella has got enough booze up there to float a battleship, so I think you should pace yourself. I suppose it is early. Well, I've just laid out the boofy for her. She says she hates drinking alone. If anyone appears early, just to send them on up. Well, in that case... Oh, you're not abandoning me. Absolutely. Oh, hi, Morrig. <laughs> Tom. <laughs> you get up to Stella's room for the party. I'm glad you're here. I hate going to these things on my own. Oh, come on. It's bound to be a wild night. <sighs> Bye, Tom. Bye. Honest to goodness, what are women like? Morag's had about four changes of outfit on. Hmm, there aren't even going to be any men there either. Oh, and of course, that is the only reason we get dressed up. To be pretty for our men folk. Oh, come on, Joanna. Morag's been up to high dough. <laughs> How can you get excited about exchanging knitting patterns and girly recipes? Well, it's just that we women are so easily pleased. After all, we picked you two. Right, I'm just going to make my way up. Gary! Gary up there. I wish. Then maybe I could get a break. What's happened to him? I don't know. I was hoping he'd be here. Well, it's supposed to be. He left the cab here last night. I had a couple of late fares and he said he would leave me this morning. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm going to give him pelters. Oh, God, where can he be? Don't panic. He just hasn't turned up for his work, that's all. Did he not come home last night? Yes, but he's been out all day and I don't know where he is. Oh, <laughs> I get it. You two have had a wee tiff. Oh, don't worry about it, darling. Every couple, I don't care who they are, has a wee fallouts. If I had a pound for every time Senga and I had a row, I'd be able to buy every house in Glendarroch. I've got to find them. That's love for you. Just kiss and make up. That's the best bit. <laughs> Takes me back. I can remember it. Just... <laughs> if you see that man of yours, tell him to get his bahookie in here pronto. Tiffany, have they had refills over there? <laughs> Any more and they fall flat in the face. <laughs> That's a general idea. <laughs> Thank you. Mmm, <laughs> 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 this is some spread, isn't it? <laughs> Salmon's delicious. Mm, <laughs> yes, it's not bad. Mary, you've had three lords. <laughs> Who's counting? <laughs> How many drinks have you had? <laughs> More than you, Mary. Time you caught up. <laughs> Ladies, can I have your attention, please? Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. oh, no show without punch. Oh, shit. I'd like to thank you all for coming here tonight. I want you to know that my door is always open to any of you. Oh, dear. <laughs> I hope you've all had plenty to eat and drink. Yes. 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 Thank you. Help yourself, there's lots more. And if you leave anything, Joanna will just serve it up to the guests for their break. <laughs> <laughs> Only kidding, Joanna. I know you wouldn't dream of it. You want a bit? I've worked here. <laughs> <laughs> we now come to the serious business of the evening. And I'm afraid I have to give you all a bit of bad news. Oh. And a bit of good news. Oh. For you ecologists out there, this is a very worrying time. The planet, as you know, is suffering from the effects of global warming. Oh. But I believe in looking at the positive side of things. What does this mean? I'll tell you, ladies. It means we can cast off our thermal vests, <laughs> our warm winciettes, <laughs> our interlop knickers, <laughs> and strut our stuff oh, in something like cool from the Lady <laughs> Lucy catalog. <laughs> Take it away, Cheryl. Cheryl. <laughs> Now, the wedding meal itself can be from £22 a head upwards, depending, of course, on which menu Eric, you choose. I'm trying to get a drink in here. There's nobody serving. I'm sorry. Perhaps you'd like to have a look at the brochure at your leisure. Uh, relax. Take a seat, maybe. Thank you. Well, thanks very much, Chick. If I lose that wedding booking, I know who to blame. Blame your staff. Where are they? Well, Tiffany's still upstairs at Stella's party. What? Stella's having a party? Mm. First I've heard about it. 
How was I not invited? Thought I was in my chance there, I know. There's no need to feel rebuffed, chick. It's a girly night. Oh, Georgiana up there as well. I never saw her in a bar either. She was only supposed to pop upstairs for a minute. I hadn't realised she hadn't come back down. Sounds as if I have an orgy. I bit have slipped a couple of guys in, eh? I could go upstairs and check out for you. Uh, no. Excuse me, but where is Mrs. Gregg from? You see, I am a guest at her party. I certainly thought it's... Uh, straight upstairs, Mrs. Mike. You can't miss it. Just follow the noise. Okay. Oh, Lord, look at this. Look, I'm going to have to get through to the bar, chick. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry, if you'd like any more information, would you like to come through to the bar for a complimentary drink? OK? Thank you very much. Come on, chick. <laughs> <laughs> now, ladies, this is guaranteed for the spark back in any relationship. We call it Daisy <laughs> That's one for you, Morag. Uh, I could just see you chasing Tom round the dairy in that. I'm telling you, that would cut the least way. <laughs> oh, I bet you that's him now saying, get right over here. <laughs> Hello? All right, Eric. Oh, <laughs> Joanna, his oh. master's voice. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, Eric. Oh, darling, I'm sorry. I can't come just at the moment because um, Isabel's demonstrating a rather complicated crochet stitch. <laughs> oh, no, but I I'm sure you will manage. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> State of these, there's nothing of them. <laughs> Guaranteed to give you piles. <laughs> <laughs> give that woman some more drink. <laughs> now, ladies, let's step up the temperature a little bit with a shiny black number. Oh. We at Lady Lucy <laughs> Lingerie call this one Meow <laughs> Catwoman. <laughs> uh, that is uh, three pounds twenty. Thank you. So, have you seen him, Eric? Ooh. Gary McDonald. Has he been in? Um, thanks. No, no, I haven't seen Gary at all. Look, it's been pandemonium here. Madonna could have walked through the door and I wouldn't have noticed. Can I have a pint of lager, please? See what I mean? Yes, sir. Has you lost your partner, then? Ah, just hasn't turned up for work this morning. No consideration these young fellas, eh? I like it's Sunday and all that. Probably wanted a wee quiet day at home with the wife. Ah, it's not at home. Sarah was down at a garage looking for him earlier. It seems they had a wee fallout and he shot the crop. <laughs> Gary? Oh, Trish, thanks for returning my call. Is Gary there? No, he probably is working. No, he didn't leave me a note or anything. That's meant for you. I know, he normally is quite good at letting me know. OK, well, sorry for bothering you. Oh, T Trish, if he does get in, will you get him to give me a call? Let me know he's all right. OK, thanks. Bye. Tuesday night, High Road returns to its usual time of 7 o'clock. <laughs>